Hi, I'm Frances Armstrong and I'm a PhD student at the University of California, Davis. I'm here at Stry and Bocas studying the evolution of larval development. Larval development is an important aspect of marine life to understand as many marine invertebrates must go through a larval stage in the plankton before they settle as adults. Uh, this larval stage is often the main dispersal stage of the organism as many marine invertebrates are sessile adults. There's a wide range of modes of larval development in the ocean and in echinoderms uh, which include sea urchins, uh, sea stars, and sand dollars. Um, there are two main types of larval development. There's feeding planktotrophic larvae and nod feeding lesthotrophic larvae. I'm interested in understanding what's involved in the evolution from a feeding larvae to a non-feeding larvae. And to study this, I'm using the sea biscuit, um, Clypeaster rosaceus and Clypeaster subdepressus, which are found abundantly here in Bogus. These two species are a great model system as they're closely related, but they have different modes of larval development. So Clypeaster rosaceus produces large eggs that develop um, through their larval stage in about a week and don't need to feed during that time, while Clypeaster subdepressus produces much smaller eggs. Um, they're about one-eighth the size of Clypeaster rosaceous eggs, and they do need to feed during larval development and take about three weeks to reach settlement as a juvenile. Um, what's really interesting about these two species, however, is that they can hybridize. So these two species make a good model system for studying what controls mode of larval development as I can pick apart effects from maternal investment, from effects of genetics by hybridizing the two species uh, because when I hybridize the two species, I'm able to get two different hybrid crosses. Each hybrid cross has essentially the same genetics as they've gotten half of their DNA from each parental species. However, according to what species the mother was, the two hybrid crosses have vastly different egg size. And so by comparing the development, of the two different hybrid crosses, I can see how both genetics and egg size control larval development. So theoretically, if the two hybrids were to develop similar to each other, then that would mean genetics is playing a large role in larval development. If the two hybrid crosses develop more similarly to their maternal species than to each other, then we would assume that that means that maternal investment is playing a large role in larval development. Uh, so to test these theories, I'm setting up uh, cultures where I'm rearing larvae of both hybrid crosses and both pure species crosses. Uh, I have treatments that um, are fed and treatments that are unfed to see what's necessary for each cross to get through metamorphosis and I also have a hormone treatment because recently um, papers have suggested that just as important as uh, egg size and energy is to get through larval development, um, hormones are also important for cueing the end of larval development and species uh, larvae that don't feed are able to produce hormone themselves while species that do feed with larvae must acquire hormone from the algae they feed on. So I'm also, in addition to testing whether 
the hybrids will need food or not to get through the larval to get through larval development. I'm also testing whether they need the food for energy or whether they just need the food for the hormone. So those are the main questions of my research. It's ongoing here at STRI and hopefully will be able to enlighten us as to the evolution of different modes of larval development in echinoderms.